Hi everybody, Joe Broncato, the air gun scientist here at the Skunk Works Lab. One of the questions we get uh, asked often is, how do I tune my FX impact for more power, say with slugs, or how do I retune it back to stock? What are all these knobs doing? Why are they here? We're going to address that in this video. Everybody's familiar with this knob here. And this basically, uh, it's a 1 through 16 power knob. It's called the power wheel. And this increases the spring tension on the hammer. Okay, now we're going to tell you what everything does first. Then we're going to show to you how to use it. In conjunction with the power wheel is this little knob here that goes up. It just spins, okay? And it's a fine adjustment for the power wheel. This knob. Oh, what is that knob? Well, there's various terms for it, valve adjustment knob, valve uh, limiting, valve travel limiting knob. The function of this knob is basically when you get your gun shooting, let's say you want it to shoot at 900. I would open this knob out a few turns. I would shoot the gun up to 920. It won't be extremely consistent until you start to dial this back down to 900. The next knob is the secondary or final regulator. The front regulator is used after you have set your back regulator. We'll go right in now into what the front regulator's uh, use is. The rifle is able to take 300 bar. The regulator, it can do 300 bar, but you're really, as I state, pounding the snot out of it, going from 300 bar to as little as 80 bar in a 22 caliber or a 177. And that's a big swing. You're asking a regulator to put out 80 bar when you're in a 22 caliber consistently from 300 down to 80 bar when your bottle's down to 80 bar. How do you make that work better? The best way to do that is don't let it see a 300. Well, it would be 300 minus 80 is 220. That's a 220 bar swing of pressure difference that can go in there. How do you make life simpler for the regulator? Fine. You put another regulator up here. If this is set for 80, in this particular case, I'm doing an extreme, 17 or 22 caliber. If this is set at 80 bar, you just set this a little bit higher, 100, okay? Now, this goes from 300, the bottle, all the way down to 100. The second regulator only sees 100 bar the whole time. And then when you go off the reg, this reg, as it's creeping down from 100 to 90 to 85 to 80, this still set at 80 without a big pressure swing, a 20 bar pressure swing. So that's the idea of this first regulator closest to the bottle. It is not extremely important where it's at. In other words, if you're at 110 versus 115, not going to make a big difference. Not going to make a difference. So don't get crazy critical trying to adjust it. And when you adjust it, it's quite touchy. So if you get it close to where you want it, just leave it there. Okay, so we talked about the first regulator. Let's talk about the second regular, regulator now, because that's really where you're going to start out at when you're wanting to tune for power or retune. Because until you know this pressure, you don't know where to set this one. So one of the most important tools that we use when we're tuning guns is obviously a chronograph. We have a couple of different chronographs that we use. We have the Caldwell, the type with the screens, and we also have the FX uh, radar type. I personally like this. It's nice and small and compact. You can throw it in the Jeep. It's not affected by LED lights, fluorescent lights, or anything like that. You don't have to have special lighting. In fact, you don't need any lighting, which is kind of cool. It works outdoors and indoors. So we're going to use this throughout the video or just talk about it. You must have a chronograph. Do not even think of tuning your gun without this. This is all going to be edited out, I bet. But I get customers telling me all the time, hey, I can't get my gun to shoot over 799 feet. Why? I don't know. I, I did like that guy's video says, I turned this knob, twisted that, and did this. And I said, and why'd you do that? I don't know. He told me to do it. I said, would it chronograph before you did it? I don't know. I don't have a chronograph. What are you trying to accomplish? I don't know. I'm just following the guy's video. So if you're going for increased power, one of the first things people do is crank up their last stage regulator and for some reason their power goes down. How could that be? Why would that be? It might go up, it might go down. What's the problem? Let's explain what a regulator does. The regulator obviously sets the pressure that's in this power plenum. Let's say it's at 80 bar and you increase it to 100 bar because you want your 22 to shoot extra fast and you chronograph it before, thumbs up and after and get a worse velocity, a lower velocity. 
anti-intuitive. What is the issue? Well, think about that. You just increased the pressure in the power plenum. Now that's like a door right here, that valve. And the hammer's hitting on the door, but there's a lot more pressure against that door. So you gotta whack that door harder to open it. And unless you do that, sometimes, now you may have already had enough spring pressure at which you will see greater velocity, but if you're see, seeing lower velocity or no change, you need to increase your hammer pressure or your hammer spring tension. And that's what this does, okay? When you're adjusting your hammer spring, either here or here, make sure the gun is not cocked. There will be pressure on the spring causes issues. You can either decock the gun or dry fire it if there's air in the tank, but do not have the gun cocked when you're trying to adjust either of these two. Now, you can overdo this. I always thought, well, you know, if you hit the door hard enough, it'll always swing open. But one of the things that can happen, and this I've seen myself, if you over tension your hammer, and I'm not talking where you over tension it to the point that when you cock it, it won't cock. We're not even there. If you over tension your hammer for a given setting, you've, you'll, you'll get the spring compressed to the point where it's just beyond that point of where it's nice and springy and now it's just crushed. And it takes a little bit more now for it to expand a little bit and start to get moving and, and going in the right direction. As opposed to when you have it smashed versus when it's out here. That is one of the reasons you want to check your hammer pressure against your new pressure. So I usually go up 10 bar per setting. You can go five, but if you if you got big changes you want to make, like say you're going from a 22 caliber 18 grain pellet to a 40 caliber 22, you got the 800 millimeter, you're going to start wanting to increase your thing to maybe 100, 120. There's going to be more. I'm not going to give you the exact numbers because your mileage may vary. But you increase the pressure. Now that you increase the pressure, you have to increase your hammer spring. Go up, see if it's increasing. If you don't see much of a change, go down. See what happens. It usually goes down, but it doesn't always. It will go to up sometimes. When you get there, you start using your fine tuning. So now we've got our pressure. Let's say it's 110, just for giggles. Where would you set this? If you said around 130, I'd be right there with you going, yeah, that sounds good. It doesn't have to be a whole lot higher than this one. Just 10 or so, I mean 20 or so bars is fine. The other thing is, the new FX Mark IIs and Mark III's have a regulator that allows you to adjust them down. Even though that the Mark II and Mark III regulators can be cranked down in pressure, don't go more than 10 bar per time. How do you do that? If you turn it this way, which is clockwise, you'll decrease the pressure. Just turn it a quarter turn. Fire, say five shots until you see the regulator stay at a certain pressure. If you're close, give it a little bit more turn but don't do it all in one shot. To increase pressure, obviously, you're going to turn it the other way around. You don't have to worry about that. You can turn it to wherever you want and you'll see the gauge go up. Obviously, the gauge doesn't go down when you decrease pressure because it has to be released with, by firing. Fire the gun until the pressure is stable. Make sure the gun's not loaded, obviously. The gun can be, quote, dry fired without pellets as long as there's air in the tank. If there's no air in the tank, well, not only are you not going to get pressure readings on your valve, as a side note, if you ever dry fire a gun without air in the tank, you're gonna slam the hammer against the valve with no back pressure, it's, it can get bent. So don't do that. For increasing the pressure, it's very easy. You can watch the gauge here and just slowly turn it up. Once you have your pressure set, then you can set your primary or tank regulator. That's it, it's easy as pie. Okay, so now we've got this regulator set, we've got this set, but remember, let's say we're shooting for 900 feet a second. Again, as I said previously, get the gun to shoot around 915, 920, with the setup between here and here. And then slowly crank in the valve travel adjustment knob. And what that's doing is, when the hammer hits the valve, it's going like this. Let's say this, it'll go this far. It'll go whang, whang, whang. You know, it's kind of, see how it's not always going the same amount with each hammer hit, okay? 
What you're doing with the valve travel, I call it the valve travel adjustment knob. You're putting a rubber stop right about here. So it's always going here. That's why it'll go a little bit faster without it, with it completely open. It's doing like say 920-ish. Now we're gonna just push it back until it only opens this long. The duration is set now, but it's a very accurate set. Now it's not gonna go a little bit further, a little bit less. It's always gonna consistently go to here and get bump stopped. That's the purpose of this knob right here. That's why you want that knob to be adjusted, if you can see it right here. This valve adjustment knob is, does exactly as I just explained. So now you know the, the function of the regulator versus the hammer spring versus the fine adjustment spring versus the valve travel adjustment knob. That, and then we threw in the first stage regulator adjusted relative to the second stage or final regulator. I want my gun back to where it is or where it was, I should say, when I got a factory. It's pretty basic. It's like 80 for a 20, 80 bar for a 22, 100 bar for a, a 25. It goes up little bits at a time. 35 can get up to 150 depending upon barrel length and all that. They used to come only with 800, but now they come in various uh, barrel lengths. But if you have any questions, hit us up. It's really easy to get these back. The whole secret, you have to use a chronograph. Make sure you get a chronograph with your gun or have a chronograph. After you do that, do everything in small adjustments. Don't go from 80 to 150. Not a good way to go, you know? And don't think, because your spring might not even be able to handle it anyway. Do everything in small adjustments. Keep copious notes. Keep a nice spreadsheet of, okay, I had it at 80. I moved it to 100. What happened? It went down 10 feet per second. But I increased these knobs here and it went from, now it went up 30 feet. Okay, you've got that all written down because you will get lost unless you're taking copious notes, unless you've got a mind like a steel trap. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them below. We'll be happy to answer them. This is Joe Broncato, the air gun scientist, saying thank you for watching the video. Shoot safe. God bless, and remember to like and subscribe to our video.